day, let's say if they're gonna, they've got more than what they can treat in that day, they go ahead at the end of the day and just give it a quick coat over the top of it, and that's it. Okay? So if it's late fall when we start to get into some weather challenges, and obviously this product has some huge advantages because it's gonna, it can sit there as long as it needs to. Again, no exposure limitation to it. But the real key is just getting everything coated. Okay? Any questions? Is it typical that it has to be applied at a certain temperature and it can't be lower? Same temperature requirement of 40 degrees. But what you're, the, the advantage to this versus the flashing tape is that it might not be two hours, but let's say in six hours it's going to be black. And so once it turns black, it can get down below those temperatures because it's already dried and cured at that point. Okay? I mean, you wouldn't want to do it at this. I wouldn't want to go out at 35 degrees and put this material on. The temperature minimum is 40 degrees. But even in late fall in the northern part of the Midwest, there's a lot of days where it gets 70 degrees in you know, the middle of the day. But at night, it gets down to you know, high 20s. And so with that in mind, you could treat this during the day, and it's going to be fine. Go ahead and put the windows in, put the pan in, put the head flashing in, so on and so forth. That way they can get the building weather tight. Okay. Um, last thing, like I said, if you don't wash this out immediately, it's, it's toast. You might as well just throw it away. Okay. One thing I didn't mention, and I'll just kind of recap a little bit. Right at your foundation, it has to be treated. Horizontal and vertical expansion joints have to be treated. All your penetrations and openings. But the number one area that I see in most markets that's not getting treated prior to the wood blocking going on is at the parapet. It has to be treated two inches onto the face of the sheathing up on the back of the framing member prior to the wood blocking going on for your parapet cap. Take a look at your details. And so recognize that's going to be an important place because third party inspection is going to pick up on that. You've got to make sure that they wrap that prior to the wood blocking going on. Okay? You can see that everything's pretty much turned black. You can see a little bit of the blue and a little of the other areas, but it's not quite where you'd want it. But at this point, all we'd have to do now is just coat it one more time and it's done. Next step, if we're going to put the weather resistive barrier product on, backstop, and there's two different versions. Backstop NT texture, which you can see the label if somebody wants to take a look at that. That's the version that's utilized to treat the joints in every case. If you're going to trowel over the entire wall surface with that same product, you don't have to spot the fastener heads. But if you're going to use the roller applied version, which is called Backstop NT Smooth, then you have to go through and spot every fastener, treat all the joints. Then come back, and over dense glass, you've got to roll two coats of the smooth. What you'll find is that by the time all I have to do is put the self-adhesive four-inch grid tape over all board joints, inside and outside corners, then I just basically have to treat that tape prior to coating the entire wall surface. So the texture is a thicker viscosity, thicker thickness in other words. So when you take a look at it, it's a trialable consistency for anyone that hasn't seen it. Thanks for cleaning those up, Tom. And all you're actually doing is just embedding that tape. Now, the gaps in the sheathing, if any exist, the maximum gap that we can go over it with it with like that tape is a quarter of an inch. If it goes beyond the quarter of an inch, then the sheathing needs to be replaced in that area. Let's say if somebody punches through the sheathing with a forklift, that section's got to be replaced. Okay? Now, if we're going to use the smooth, that means all these fastener heads and I'd have to come through, much like doing drywall, and spot every one. If I'm just going to use the texture and trowel it, then all I actually have to do after I treat the joints, wait till you can't disturb it, and just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and coat it now. Just imagine we're 30 minutes down the road. Then all I actually have to do is coat that surface.
And so you'll see that, even though that tape's not dry yet, then I just coat the surface and it's done. As far as labor, in our market, the contractors have figured out that there's about a 40% labor savings by just using the texture alone and troweling the material. And so that's pretty much across the board what a lot of the firms do. If some of the firms have less skilled labor, then they will use the smooth and have somebody you know, hand them a paint roller. Otherwise, you just coat it and move on. And so again, the nice advantage to the, these combination of products, you can do either one first, which is personal preference based upon those specific job site conditions. And so when you're all said and done with a combination of products, the only thing that you should see on that wall is either backstop, the blue material, and aqua flash or flashing tape. That's it. You shouldn't see any framing member, any sheathing members anywhere. Base of the wall, top of the wall, all penetrations and terminations. Just use this as a gauge. Once this dries, if there's a GP emblem, even when you put two coats on it, you're always going to see that emblem read through. You won't see the yellow. But you won't see the yellow. And so there's no way with one coat when you roller apply it that you're going to get to that point. The other important consideration, what's the coverage? It's all dependent upon the specific substrate that's involved. This class is different than exterior gyp sheathing versus you know, exposure one plywood versus, ma versus masonry block. So as an example, typically what I would recommend over masonry block is a, is a parge coat of Genesis. Then go with a trowel version or a roller version backstop NT. It's just a much more economical and feasible so that you get that filled in and get your monolithic weather barrier. It's not that it's required over that masonry surface, but when specified, it's becoming commonplace here. Okay? So recognize that the different substrates have a listed different coverage rate, so just refer to your specifications and details for that specific uh, project.